here. So last week, elections open. Thank you again, Brett. And thank you, George, for being the... How do you call it? The check... How do you call the one with... Super supervisor. Supervisor. Commissioner. Commissioner. Okay, Commissioner. Um, oh, we have we met with Umbraco. We talked about how we can improve existing modules. Well, modules we need in Orchard. Um, 1.10, same status. Um, elections done. Okay, add page. What's the day? Status. Demos, anyone? The usual ones to the demos are not here, but we can use more demos. We have anything? I have some things, but uh, yeah, who cares? Um, those status. So, and it's a good reminder for every one of you here to vote. The URL, the explanation is here. So we shut the. I'm pasting it again, and you just need to send an email with, sorry, to vote at brettmorrison.com. That's possible. Here with the names. Um, of the guys you want to vote for, and also uh, um, your GitHub username or Codeplex username that uh, Brett can check to see if you're an active uh, contributor to Orchard or the forum. Can, uh, do you want to, um, Sebastian, do you also want to promote it on the Orchard um, email mailing list as well? There is no more email mailing list. Yeah, but I still get, I guess those are just Google alerts. Yes, I think so. There are nothing about uh, yeah, it, uh, when we moved away from outer curve, um, the yeah. mailing list was deleted from outer curve. Okay, I'll post it on the Gitter chat room now. Then. Uh, oh yeah, you can. Yeah, I, I did that. I think last. Oh, did that I? I but yeah, you can do it again. For uh, sure. Yeah. Okay. No, it's very active. I'll do it now. Um, Um, good status. It's the repository here. So, 11 days, 7 days, SIPC updated element display to use invoke extension method. Yeah, this we talked about, I think. Yes. Using the internal existing invoke method. So, this method is just uh, calling all the drivers here with this action, but not throwing an exception is one if one fails just continue on the next one necessary web config so this one a file in the orchard dashboard which was committed I think by mistake and uh, which was leading to uh, an unnecessary folder in the release of 192 but it's fine it was just a folder with a web config so no module will be taken from that uh, but uh, good fix uh, then on master uh, lombic fix the typo on .nest, uh, merge that to 19x, which is the correct way to do that. Um, then pull request from Jamie Phillips. Is here. Um, his pull request adding in the URL field element. And um, yeah. good, and, and in 19x, it's a new field. And for dynamic forms, and then Sipke uh, uh, removed all the calls to tokenize in the or messages for the form elements. This is what we had talked on the PR with Jimmy Phillips, and Jimmy was waiting for that to push his changes too. Um, then merge one Linux into dev. Then. Um, from Daniel, a uh, perf improvement, which is that he's explaining it here, which is nice. This way, we don't have to guess what it means. Um, the idea is that if you are um, trying to, well, if you're not authenticated and um, 
there are more requests than that, it won't try to re-authenticate you for each request. There is a flag like, hey, we know you are not a your author user, so the flag is set to true, and every time there is a get authenticated user, no, you are not an author user, so we can return them safely. We don't need to issue a request to database. Uh, so that's easier. In this, in the case that the action you are triggering requires authentication. We know that you're not authenticated, so that's good. Perf improvement. Um, and this thing, it's a new branch I created. So um, for those who are interested, and this is a repository. There is not that much activity, but uh, steady, I would say. Um, their goal is to move from Lucene so Lucene is a port from the Lucene Net is a port from the Apache uh, version, the Java version, and uh, it's all, Lucene Net is also in the Apache Foundation. Um, so the current state of Lucene today on the release NuGet package is that they are on par with Lucene 3. Dot something, and this is how they do with their recycle. Um, the, the, the number of Lucene Net matches the version of the Java version it's porting. And they've been working uh, for a year already on porting Lucene Net to Lucene 4.8. Okay, and it, it matches the master branch. Uh, you see, cleaning up, getting ready to development towards 4.8 a year ago. So they are working for the 4.8, and they released their first beta um, this morning because the NuGet team is using Lucene and wants to uh, um, to use the latest uh, features. So they they ship they are shipping the binaries on a mile get feed now with the CI. So every time they push something on master, the CI will kick in a new build. So I, I was able to get then a new DLL for Lucene, which I pushed on a branch Lucene for 8, because it's not yet ready. Um, I did some migration, some things are changing, definitely breaking changes. Um, it's still not compiling, because I there is no so far, there is no such thing as query parser. And we need query parser to escape queries that users uh, type in. And I'm afraid that it's something that is not yet implemented in 4.8. So that's um, that's blocking. But I still push the, the branch in case someone wants to look at it. Um, oh, one more committee member. That's it. Um, should Lucene country be there as well by default? Uh, good question. It depends on what is in Lucene country. Um, maybe that's part also of the branch for a. Oh, Bertrand, did you hear what I just said? The last three minutes? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, so, should Lucene country be there as well? It depends on what is in Lucene country. Uh, let me check. There are lots of lots more new packages. Maybe that's the difference with before too. So this thing is so I'm not sure everything is a package in this case. Um, maybe there are, everything is in Lucene that package itself. But I know that facet is a, a dedicated um, package. I haven't looked at it. So where is Lucene country? Is it a new, another repository? I just see everything here. You see, even special, which which was in Lucene country before, is now in the Lucene Net folder. So maybe we don't need Lucene country. Maybe it's in the package. But it's Lucene. It's not uh, Lucene the Net country. Nothing to do. And some things here are, uh, yeah. We have to check. So, we, yeah, multilingual analyzer. So I'm not sure we want everything to be there. We definitely support them already. We just need a way to be able to set them up as module. We can't ship them. We can't ship all of them directly with, with Orchard. Even more than that, apparently, um, some of them don't work correctly. 
at least for the French one, uh, there's a guy who made a custom analyzer because it was not it was also not correct. Maybe it was too too old analyzer. So not, not yet, but we have to see what packages from there we want to ship uh, in core. Uh, again, or oh, is it in no, queries? I couldn't find a query parser. Or maybe it's called differently now. But if I go on the home page, they say that. What? Did they just change it? No. Attributing? Yes. Code as it's currently pending being ported from scratch. Query parser join classification queries. So this thing is completely not implemented apparently. And no indeed. Good. So that's on the status uh, list. Um, Questions about the status? Um, so the query parser. This is the only block I want. And then um, so one dot ten still missing a authentication. I still haven't done the um, pushing the changes from the Microsoft team. Um, gallery. I got no feedback at all. I've been on the website multiple times. I don't see anything changes. So, so I assume that I will just publish it and let people complain that it's broken. Fix it. I don't see any new packages, and when I sign in, nothing new. Nothing new, so that's good. <laughs> so I will try to uh, to publish it then, and we'll see what happens. Publish and migration, and then uh, we'll see what's uh, what's happening. If, but I don't think people will complain. It should, it should work the same. Um, the URL will be the same. Uh, if not, I will do an automatic redirection from the old feed URL to the new one um, on the web config, which will be easy. And 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 if the URL is different, you will be able to target it uh, uh, directly also. But yeah, uh, so the idea with the gallery is uh, publish current version, inform data, communicate, uh, redirection from the old feed. Because yeah, there is a URL for the old data feed that all the orchard deployments point to, which must be gallery.orchard.net slash packages, something like that, or slash API slash packages. So if the URL is different because of my implementation, then I will do the redirection. Um, and also uh, update orchard. For the new installations, the new setups, so they will point to the, the correct one, um, and that should be it. Um, those uh, actions, questions in the gallery. Questions. Status. What else? Thursday I talked about uh, Orchard 2. Uh, when did I do the change? Uh, um, not since 
or maybe since last week. So if we haven't, I don't remember. So the let them. Changed Brochard to Orchard 2. But it's not this one that you want to see actually. It's. But this one was automatically going to. So Orchard CMS, Orchard 2. So Orchard 2 is a new repository. It was not just a name change, and GitHub handled that correctly. And even if you go to the previous URL, it will redirect to this one which is awesome, it was done automatically by GitHub. And even if you go on the old Gitter IM for Brochard, it will also redirect the IM to Orchard 2. Awesome again. Um, so this is a repository. There is some activity and also some pull requests and people uh, talking about it. Um, so the status of Orchard 2 is that... Um, because it works on the uh, .NET Core is done and is integrated with Orchard 2. Um, since last week, uh, we work on the Kotlin migrations, which is done. It works like in Orchard. But with uh, indexes and not record. Uh, what else? Um, that, uh, because it's it works with many databases, so, so far uh, blocked on SQLite because there is a bug in the SQLite driver that has been fixed but is on the tip of their uh, development branch. Uh, Sebastian, your, your audio is dropping every five seconds or something. Um, I don't know what's causing it. Do you have an idea? One two one two. Are you still yeah. bugged? Still the same? Tell me. Did no, it's bad. Sounds sounds good. Good. Yeah. Mm, now it's constantly low for me. Oh. Yeah, but it, no, that that was very very low. But it, it's okay. Uh, it's low, but it's okay. Okay. But last time I think I, I oh I checked the Egyptian in Skype, not Skype for business. I just had to enable automatic uh, adjustment. I don't know where it is. I don't know where you define the settings for that. Tell me, I will replug again. Mm, uh, no, it's better so, actually. So plug the so same one. Blocked on SQLite, but not really blocked because so far it's just then working with SQL Server. The um, mm. Data migration is done. We are investigating the BI issues right now. There might be some limitation is in the experience V5 to do that. The uh, issues meaning related in regards to uh, multi tenancy. Uh, it might be worse on ASP.NET 5 than on ASP.NET. Sorry worse on ASP.NET 6 than on ASP.NET 5, actually, because they have something that now we have to be compat compatible with before we could do whatever we wanted. Now, no. Um, we can't, so investigating. Um, what else? Uh, setup works, uh, just some issues with how to store content items and the ID references, but that should be fixed very soon. But it's, it's um, scoring pretty well so far. I have not anything very blocky. It's not really blocked on SQLite. SQLite doesn't work. The fix, not really. It's not really. The fix is done, but not yet reported. Um, that's it. Any questions? Maybe a short in me. Any question about uh, this work? Again, there is a Gitter page. I'm following. I'm following 
both Orchard and Orchard 2, you see people, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but you know it. Orchard 2, same thing, if you want to see what's happening. Every time there is a commit or um, some questions, we go there. Nick is following it. Um, the demos. Good. Elections. Okay, open discussions then. Anyone has some topic to talk about? Wants to complain or ask for questions, suggestions? Free. Nothing? Okay. Just listeners this week. So let's look at the issue tracker then. Pull request. Yeah, because uh, yeah. on last triage, uh, we disgressed on Orchard V2 and how it was implemented. Um, so, and that all these greens, CLA not, CLA not required, already signed, beautiful. Um, I will close all the PRs from uh, Barour about the theme, unless there is something I missed, but I don't think it's relevant anymore. Barour, please uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but this one should be deleted. This one. This one will be discussed. Fourteen. Okay. Um, This one I don't is still going on and I don't really understand what's what's going on. I think Zoltan is on the case. There are also some issues opened. So I will leave it here. For now, uh, fixed browser and friendly charts. Okay, I will open these ones. And maybe you can talk about the first one here because Baru is here. Uh, fix href, new tref. Uh, fixed initialization of tenant prefix and add a new tref function that is similar to href. The argument path is relative to the root of the theme. So instead of doing href mm -hmm. tilde themes, you can do tref this. So what is the issue with uh, this code? There is no issue here, right? Mm. Because you say this one, but this one, fixed initialization of tenant prefix. It's not a fix, it's just being explicit on the value, but that should not change anything. This is just about tref. Um, isn't what uh, url.content is for? And html.content? For content link? Probably there's no such thing. But url.content does the same thing, I think. What? url.content. Uh, that builds a url that's... Uh, App application pass and tenant yes. prefix aware. It will resolve that. But what's your question about that? The, isn't this 
implementing the same thing, but uh, manually. T-Ref? Yeah. No. The goal of T-Ref is that you don't have to specify the name of the current theme. It will inject it for you. Oh, sorry, I misunderstood the, the object here. Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, actually, I'm not sure whether this is something uh, that the author wanted. Uh, because, well, current theme is not necessarily the, the same theme where you write this or that you want to reference. It might not be what you want. It might lead to more issues also if you have multiple themes and you're switching from them. And you might preference, yeah, but. Uh, I'm a choose or, or even if you write a base theme, I, I mean, uh, you write a theme where you use this, and then somebody writes a base theme that um, uses your theme as a base theme, then this will be wrong as well. So I think we should not have it like this. Oh, uh, um, I believe that if, if you're using the base theme, uh, there, there is only one of team in the content so when you get to the to the base team the base team sees itself as the current team uh, I think that that mechanism is not working perfectly and the base team anyway um, so I think, uh, I think what Zoltan meant is that you have multiple themes at the same time there is not a single current theme some, yeah, it's like um, using, you might want to point some files from the base theme, some files from the current theme. Yes, this this uh, only uh, works with for the current uh, theme you are writing. Uh, if you want to go to the base theme, uh, it has to be resolved at you have a different to use the, the current time. Theme. You have to be specific on... That's why uh, that's why you must say the, you'd better be any, explicit every time than just trying uh, to have someone something do it for you and you don't even should, see that. Uh, th these are two different times. Uh, this is a reference that that is that occurs uh, when the page is rendered and the yes, resolution of the theme should be done when the page is served. Yes, but when the page is served, you might still want to render something from the base theme. It's an option. Uh, I mean, I, it's not opposite to what you are doing, but... That, um, that I mean, doesn't break, yes. No, I'm, I'm saying it's breaking. I mean, this, <coughs> this would break. So, if you write a base theme where you use this, then when you run uh, just the base theme as the current theme, it will work. But right. when you uh, derive from the theme, then that theme will be the current theme. It will break. Yes. Uh, so if you have a base team with base views and you use that, you are screwed if you have a child team. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure about that because we are sure. when the request request happens, you don't sure. see in the request two, two, uh, two themes. You only see one yes, theme. And that's the issue. Let's example. Theme A is the base theme. Theme B is the is the child right. the child team okay and in okay. base theme you have some views because as a goal you reuse the views and these views they don't know about b so they say tref the file the local file foo.cshtml so when you oh, it, you shouldn't no uh, for uh, for base uh... you shouldn't use that good so i think this is this we should not take it because this will this will just add more confusion to prevent you from just copying something which will always be static, which is the name of your theme. It might change, but it's more churn to implement that and will add more issues than it will fix. Or any help. One, one, scenario, that is, check. Mm -hmm. one scenario that is not covered by the static 
name of the theme is when you actually want to create a new theme that is based on some existing code uh, and you don't want to use a child theme. Um, that, that's fairly common. You start from a vanilla bootstrap theme and uh, you start modifying stuff and uh, if, if, there, if there are some static parties in there, you, you'll have to modify those as well because your theme will have a different name. Yeah. This is exactly the use uh, use case. But then so you can use um, a static property, and if you really think that this module should be copy pasted, because we, let's say we want to solve this issue, we add that, and so we assume that we suggest people to use this thing, so it will solve the copy paste feature, but it will break the child theme feature. Mm. The, the base theme yeah. author will have to do work anyway. He will have to use that API or he will have to yes. include a constant that, that gives the name of the theme. Where would you put that constant? Anywhere in your theme, in the, I don't know. Mm, yeah. In a file and that you reference it. But, but uh, I mean, if you want to fix the copy-paste issue by using that, you're adding some issues for the, for the child themes. Because then you will have to change all the base files which were using this extension to remove the extension. This is even worse. I think today, today, there, are today there are no issues. You have to be explicit the, about what you are pointing to. That's I, it. I'm not sure that today the the child and parent team are working that well. Um, there are issues with uh, referencing to CSS files and uh, CS files and. It's it's not very uh, it's not very uh, how do I say not stable or workable or whatever. So uh, I I I think uh, for for now until uh, the themes are uh, fully uh, the the child and parent themes are fully. Debugged. Uh, I think this is a well. If good you solution think that, if you find issues, then you should open issues for these ones. And maybe one of the solutions will be what you are suggesting here. But here, I just see more issues with what you are trying to do, or new issues. Maybe it will fix one, one, but include another one. So there is no point into doing that. I believe that there are actually a few similar things in the code already. So uh, in the core and modules. Um, this is just writing it uh, more, uh, you know, conveniently. Uh, I can I can look them up maybe, um, but um, okay, and, it's not and, it's and not a big deal yeah, anyway. It's not blocking because you can always have an extension method on your uh, theme to do that. Right. Even your base theme, if you want it on your base theme. Okay. So if, if you want to continue, open a, an issue, show the the actual issues, and we can also point to new issues that this will render, like Soldani is saying with the base and child one. Copy pasting will be solved, but base and, and child will be broken for sure. Um, I think it is already broken uh, pretty badly. So, um, well, okay, today, but uh, I'll, today, I'll open an issue. If today I say href and I use a theme folder, it will use this exact theme folder. Even when I inherit, when it's rendering the view from the base, uh, the base theme, it will use the base theme folder for the views in the base theme. And if I'm writing a, 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 a view from the child theme, it will use the child theme folder. So they can both serve, serve different files. That's fine. With I this one, the... it's, it can't. Mm -hmm. That's obvious. I think the views are working anyway, uh, because the views have uh, a very uh, elaborate uh, mechanism to find, to look for views in the theme order. So you just write the theme name it's without any... It's not about any... finding a view here, it's about rendering a link 
for a specific file. And this file exactly. is in a specific folder. So you mm -hmm. have to know where the file is when you write the link. Can't be dynamic when you have two themes. It has to be specific because you have two, two themes. Okay, I'll, uh, and if you think I'll try to think about it. Uh, no, I, I'll try to think about it a little bit more, and uh, maybe if it's worth it, uh, we'll have a discussion. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Fixed reply button and command link and edit useful CSS class. Reply button, command link. Okay, signed. Addressed. Okay, seems like improvements. I should on the theme. No, on the comments module, parts that comment. So, by the way, is there any user for request on the comments? Yes. Oh, that might conflict then. Let me see. There are two PRs on improving the comments shape. So this one is CSS and things. So adding a CSS class, which is okay. This is different. So it's in theory a breaking change, but I don't think we care about this breaking change because the class was comment plus the ID. Which seems which seems very wrong for a class, and it's putting it in the in the ID. I would have used a dash though. You agree disagree with with this thing? I think it's fine to accept it even in one NX. It's a it's a breaking I don't care change. Then the threaded comments only if it's active and the user is authorized and the is authorized is defined at comment here, uh, which is good. I'm not sure. No, that works. Let's say we are caching the page. It's caching for the authentic, for the anonymous only. So if it's anonymous, that will be the right for the anonymous. But if the anonymous cannot paste, cannot add a comment, that's fine because when the user is, is um, authenticated, then there is no more caching. So the icon will be re-processed. Okay. So this one is good to me. What did I miss here? What? Issues with the microphone? You want me to replug? No, I can hear you fine, Sebastian. Okay. So I, I won't change anything then. Okay, good. Um, so I'm okay with these changes. Anyone has any meant to do? Do we ask to have a dash here for the ID? Command dash one, command dash two. It was there. I think if that's if thank you, I think that if uh, that's a standard, you should stick to it. That's my standard. 
<laughs> I think we do the same thing for the content items dash one, content item dash two, and so on. So I will ask and see. Okay. Good and then the comments count to be customized in detail and summary as others. Okay. Two new shapes. Hmm. What branch is he targeting here? Dev. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Um Parts comments count summary. It's count summary, comments count. And here it's also in the comments count. Is a comments count and the summary has a different shape then. The placement should be changed. Where is the placement? agree that if the placement is not changed then nothing will happen there. It's a new shape, new entry, no placement will never be displayed. Yeah that will be a problem. But at the same time maybe it's on purpose because he's writing no comments with a plural and this thing is already somewhere. So maybe he's not displaying it and okay that's weird. I think that's wrong then. Oh, six conversation. What is that? Nothing. But if you follow this argument, then you can say we don't need a summary. Just need well, just need a count because you can always redefine it for the summary. It's always better two of them summary, not summary. Let's count. Now, now your mic just faded, Sebastian. Unless you're just thinking. Or maybe yeah, I'm just talking quietly. Can you hear me? No? Yeah. Now we can. Maybe. Yeah, yeah we can hear you fine. Yeah. So, uh, otherwise, I should. Okay. The other mm. assumption is that. And the new shape takes the readiness of you, so I assume this should be removed too. Or you are missing, sorry, you are missing the call to this shape from the view during the no comments.
chest all this may don't parts for that because from the view which contains already this text because it's somewhere this one is somewhere from this view which already contains that you can call display that because it's inside maybe some more HTML it's not a separate thing that you put somewhere uh, and order. So I don't think. Fixed reply button. Um, fires updating and updating events when menu items are reordered. Interesting. Handlers, this is the core navigation. Where is that? Next post on the core navigation management. Uh, if menu position different, menu position, so updated content context. Uh, interesting. Okay, this is just when the save button is called to reorder things. So there is no other property which has changed. So that's fine. The only issue here is that it's usually called from drivers. But here there is no driver for that. So that's fine. Okay. Good with that. Any comments? I think that's good. Still calling the menu position. Just calling events to say it has changed. If you want to do something. For instance, if you are caching the menu, you can, oh, the menu item has changed, so I need to invalidate the cache. Um, by the way, maybe you want to do that also on the menu itself. Done. comment on that. Okay. New record could be found in database for luck. What is that? Get this warning every minute just by enabling a job queue feature. So just by enabling a job queue feature, I get this every minute. No record could be found in database for lock. So it means it's looking for lock record, meaning this feature is creating a record in a table to materialize the lock. Okay, so this thing is an i-dependency, and this thing is a singleton. Okay, that makes sense. This is a good thing. That seems good. 
everyone agrees this thing is a single is a dependency this thing is a singleton we need to work it yes I wonder uh, how it works actually because um, one of the implementations of uh, distributed log surveys uses the database so it should have got timeouts or something well, like this this is exactly what he's saying as soon as you enable the feature you get that every minute <laughs> okay that's how he found it so but it's in dev branch so not everyone is using dev branch it explains the, tech, the dev branch and job queue so uh, so watching this one Avoid bugs by automatically clearing your test, yes. And we have people also testing everything live. This one will be closed because it's on dev, no? Oh, this is different. Fix for browser and friendly characters in the non -tural. Oh, I remember this one. So where are we now? Blah, 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 blah. This guy commented, no. So my comment was, yes, call that, but on the base 64. Oh, that's so sad. Why didn't you do that? Okay. And it should target. Uh, okay. Target 19x because it should be fixed in one next. It's not breaking, it's just improving. If you have links already working, they won't be URL encoded, so that's fine. They will be the same. So we should have it in one index. Good. Check. 12 open, that's good. Good ratio. Questions? Clear the issues. This one and this one. Theme button. Base theme. Ooh. But I'm afraid he's using an old version of Fortune. Uh, and then this one, I've seen this one in some website and I fixed it I think in the theme directly, but never in the Orchard source code. Uh, yes, the ellipse size thing it's cutting the HTML so the issue is that um, we extract the text so we remove all the tags and then we cut at like char number 100 but maybe it's subtext like this and uh, an entity like e cute or e space and maybe it cuts it there so in the end, the, the thing we are rendering is that, and you get this text directly in the HTML. So that's bad. So we need to ensure that it's not in the middle of an entity. Or decode it, like it's uh, and space, cut it, and then re-encode it. Some code there somewhere, but I'm not sure. I've seen that though. No. 
Any questions? Has anyone tried um, Barrow's changes on the modules and themes folder? I like oh yes, and it worked as expected. Good then. Thanks everyone. Brett, again, thank you. <laughs> See you next week for the results. No problem. That's the way to force you to attend uh, the meeting. Yes. Um, okay. See you on Thursday. Bye. Bye. -bye. Goodbye. Bye, everyone.